Shalom, shalom, sisters. Before I get started, I want to give all honor and glory and praises to the Most High God of Israel. Call Yahweh by Hashem, Hamashiach, Wamalaki, Shai. And today, I just wanted to get on here really quick and pull up some precepts for sisters who may feel like they're falling off in this truth or haven't slipping lately. It's just something to uplift our spirits, Lord willing. So the first precept is Proverbs chapter 4, verse 14. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. So we can't fall into the path of the wicked. Satan and these evil spirits want us to fall away from the Most High. We must avoid all things that are evil. By all means. And we get um, Sirach 37 and 27 as well. Um, my son, prove thy soul in thy life and see what is evil for it and give not that unto it. For all things are not profitable for all men. Neither hath every soul pleasure in everything. And let's get down to 31. Verse 31, by surfeiting have many perished, but he that take, taketh heed prolongeth his life. <clears throat> so if you know you struggle with, you know, a lazy demon, feed not into it. I'm talking to myself as well. You know, we got to try to set reminders in our phones, you know, to read, to pray. So we're not idle in the spirit. We got to constantly, constantly, constantly self-examine ourselves, not just when it's the Day of Atonement or when it's the Passover. You know, we want to know what's evil for our lives because we don't want to get caught slipping or get too comfortable that we fall out of this truth. And too much wickedness, no matter what it is, whatever spirit it is or how minute it may seem, has caused many to fall out of this truth. And we know that we follow this truth. You know, that's it. Nine times out of ten, that's it. There's no going back from that. So we don't, we know that once we fall out, you know, that's death right there. And we, we, we're we sure for eternal life. So let me get Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Yahweh Shai Mashiach is in you? Except you be reprobates. So once you start just kind of going with the flow, you know, day by day and not sitting back and having that moment to evaluate, you know, what could I do better? What could I have done better today? You know, what shouldn't I have said? What should I have said? You know, what we can do better as servants or sisters or as a wife. You know, if we're not doing that, we're on our way to reprobate land. And we must examine ourselves to prove to the Most High that we are in this faith. Because no one else is going to prove it for us. We got to work out our own salvation. Nobody else can do it for us, man. And this is Revelation chapter 3 and verse 2 and 3. Be watchful and strengthen the things that which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before Yahweh. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. So, we we don't want to get caught slipping. Just like I said previously, we don't want to get caught slipping because we know the Yahweh is on his way. We're seeing the prophecies come to pass we're seeing the trend in realms we're seeing the comedy crashing and folk the countries different nations aren't dealing with the u.s anymore you know they're teaming up you know they're testing nukes they're doing all manners of wickedness all around the world not even just in america all around the world we're seeing prophecies being fulfilled so we got to be watchful and strengthening the things that are already <clears throat> <Slock it. laughs> strengthen the things that 
are weak. You know, we struggle with, you know, misspeaking, you know, attitude problem, whatever the case is, we must strengthen that, cut that off. It's constantly killing that old woman. So we got to make sure that we're in perfect standing as much as possible with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai before all hell really does break loose. And also so we don't get taken out of this truth. Let me get Baruch 4 and 28. For as it was your mind to go astray from Yahweh, so being returned, seek him ten times more. So when we find ourselves constantly falling, we're constantly falling by the same spirit, we're in this really low space, and we're feeling like, dang, man, like, I, I feel so far away from the most high, I keep going off, you know, I'm so down and sad and mad and bitter and just low in the spirit. This is the time that we go back and seek Yahweh Hashem Yahweh ten times more. So when we're feeling low in the spirit, when we're feeling down and out and feeling like, you know, this person's against us, that person's against us, or whatever the case is, we must turn to our our strength and our power. Yahweh Hashem Yahweh We turn to these precepts that he gives us. Because these precepts are literally living waters. Though these precepts give us life, man. They give us direction. So we must use them. We must use the toolbox that the Most High has given us. Prayer, fasting, and reading. And this is Luke chapter 8, verse 13. They on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. So this is the parable in Luke chapter 8. We don't want to be like a rock with no roots. The rocks have no roots. We want to be deeply rooted in this thing. We want to be that seed that was planted. You know, we found out about the truth. We're excited. Yay, I'm an Israelite. You know, the kingdom of heaven is for me. You know, I have a chance, you know, that not a lot of people have. So we... (laughs) We gotta receive this truth with joy and believe that we can actually make it through the power of spirit, Yahweh Shem Shai, by enduring to until the end through all temptations. We don't want to come in this truth and be like, oh yay, we made it, we made this truth. And then as soon as you know somebody did you wrong, you can't find in your heart for to forgive them. But now you got the truth. And all that work will be in vain. Because most times I'm not going to look and say, oh, yeah, well, you were in the truth for a good couple months. But then, you know, old girl, old dude, did did you wrong when you fell out? No, I'm, I'm going to give you a pass on that. Granted, the most High has mercy on who he has mercy on. But, you know, we got to we got to do our part in this thing. We got to do our part. Our assignment is not finished yet. So this is verse. Oh, let me go. Let me get Revelation chapter 3 and verse 15 and 16. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. So, we can't be lukewarm in this thing. We can't be lukewarm in this thing. This is the classic. Go over this time and time again. The Lord will rather you pick a side. If you're going to be wicked, then be wicked. Be destroyed with the rest of two-thirds. If you're going to be hot, then on fire, and endure, and be a righteous woman. If you're hot by all shine, be an example, be a light. And he would rather you be that. Ultimately, you know, he has the most high, you hot by all shine, has no pleasure in, you know, destroying us. But he will do it because he's a just God. So we don't want to get on the Lord's bad side. We don't want to be playing both sides because that's not how this thing works and this is first corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13 there has no temptation taking you but such as is common to man but yahweh is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it 
And I'm going to jump down to um, 21 and 22 in a second. But just tapping in on this, you know, there's nothing. Everything is preordained. Everything is preordained from the foundation of the earth. So that tribulation you're going through, that trial you're going through, you know, when you lack in that faith, lack in that patience, whatever the case is, the most high preordained that through the spirit. These spirits listen to you. How about Shemya Shai? And he's putting these spirits on us to see how we're going to react, to see if we're going to stay 10 toes down or we're just going to flee and be like, forget this. This is just too much. I'm not doing this. Like, you know, we got to make sure that we remember that this, remember this precept that. We're not the only ones going through this. There's another Israelite sister, 10 times out of 10, going through the situation. Same situation you're going through. But, you know, the beautiful thing about it is the Most High tries us because he knows. He knows that you have a way to escape this. You have a way to bear this pain, bear this tribulation, bear this trial. And that's what sisters are for. That's what your support system is for. That's what prayer and fasting is for. You got to prove us. And what other way? You would lose all hope if you didn't go through anything because you would think that you didn't need the Lord. We would think that we didn't need the Lord if we didn't go through anything. So going down to verse 21. So this is 1 Corinthians 10, 21 and 22. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? So, a big lie. We don't want to be provoking the Lord to jealousy when we're idle in the spirit. You know, we're not giving our time to the most high. We're not using our gifts, our talents as we should. You know, we're not checking on our sisters as we should. Bearing one of those burdens. You know, can't be out here. Saying we in this truth, we, you know, we trying to do right, we're trying to be righteous, but at the same time, we still want to celebrate birthdays. We still want to dress how we want to dress and, you know, talk how we want to talk and act the way we want to act. No, we can't bring the old woman into the truth. You just can't do it. That's not how this works. We don't want to provoke the Lord to jealousy with any idolizations and, um, Locky, you can't dibble and dabble in wickedness and then try to proclaim, oh, yeah, I'm following these commandments. I'm a righteous, I'm a just woman. Proverbs 31 woman. No, that's not how it works. That's a dangerous game provoking the Lord to jealousy. When our actions show that we can't fully commit to the Most High, we make him angry and jealous, which can cause him to destroy us and lose patience with us and lose that mercy and that grace that he's granted us. So we got to stop playing. And this is verse. Um, just lock your chapter 2 verse 21 of second peter and it reads for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness then after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them but it is happened unto them according to the true proverb the dog is turned to his own vomit again and the so that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. So it's better if you didn't even waste your time coming into the truth, trying to be better, work out your own salvation, like we were saying earlier, if you're just going to quit in a couple months or a couple years in. We can't be weak in this thing. We can't be weak. Like, a lot of the times we might feel like, you know, oh, we got everybody above us, man's above us, Christ's above us, the most high above us, but that's not an excuse to be weak. That's not an excuse to be weak. You know, the daughters of Zion are very, very, very strong, comely women. We're still made in the image of Yahweh Al Shai. And that's a very strong power. So we got to count the cost in this thing. The truth wasn't designed to be easy. So we got to pay our way spiritually and go through these things. And be grateful when we're going through it. Because we know the most high is dealing with us. This is the book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 27 through 30. And it reads, And what and whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. 
For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Lest happily, after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. So this man basically started building whatever he was building, a tower, and he probably built up the foundation, you know, put the cement down, kind of put the little post, the stake things to hold the building up, all that. But didn't even finish putting, you know, the roofing on it. You know, he didn't have enough money to cover the plumbing for the tower. Whatever the case is, he didn't count the cost. We don't want to be like that man. So everybody see it be like, man, look at this tower. That man thought he was going to build this great, nice looking tower. And look at it. Beat up, bust up, not even finished. What a waste of time and money. We don't want that to be us through the spirit. So we got to count the cost when we come into this truth. We got to see, am I going to be able to bear this? Am I going to be able, able to be hated of all men by Yahweh Shai? For Yahweh Shai's sake, so I can. You know, am, are we going to be able to um, go through it, be brought low and endure? Are we going to be able to endure famine? Are we going to be able to endure... You know, being a pilgrim on the earth. We got to count the cost in this thing. And if we don't bear our cross and endure through the hardships that we go through, like how was I and drink of that cup, then we can't possibly think that we'll be honored or counted great in the kingdom of heaven. That just doesn't make sense. We should be embarrassed, embarrassed to slip out of this truth and lose faith. We don't want to be mocked for not finishing what we started in this walk. Our assignment is not complete yet. It's not complete yet. We're trying to get that crown placed on our heads. You know, we're trying to hear, well done, my faithful servant. Lord willing. And we can only do that if we endure through these low points in our walk. And this is the book of Sirach, chapter 26 and 28. There be two things that grieve my heart, and the third maketh me angry. A man of war that suffereth poverty and men of understanding that are not set by and one that returneth from righteousness to sin. The Lord prepareth such an one for the sword. So this precept should, you know, honestly be like a little post-it note on our mirror or like a wallpaper. You know, something you look at every day if you have been falling away from the faith. You know, you've been losing faith. You've really been straying away from the most high and getting right back into the world we must not forget that you know the most high is not just full of mercy he will give out extreme judgment if we're not on our stuff in this truth we don't want to be a part of the slaughter of the two-thirds this first corinthians slaki of first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 19 and i'm gonna get 22 as well quench not the spirit abstain from all appearance of evil abstaining from worldly things and tendencies that we had in the world will help us stay in the faith as well as keeping our fire lit so stay encouraged you know stay in the word we gotta stay around some mighty sisters who you know give us that exhortation give us that sound counsel you know keeping our minds occupied in good things good works things that are pleasing to the most high and just like we were saying earlier in Proverbs chapter 4, we got to avoid those things that are worldly. Avoid those tendencies that are often wicked. This is the book of Luke chapter 9, verse 62, the classic. And Yahweh said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of Yahweh. There's no telling when the most High may take his merciful hand off of us. So we got to stay on the straight and narrow We got to stay on the straight and narrow no matter what. And um, let me also get 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy 6, 11, and 12. But thou, O man of God, flee for these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. And these are the main things that we get tempted with. 
These are the main things that we attempted with to do the opposite of. We're tempted to not have faith. You know, when the bills ain't paid, you know, when they're threatening, you know, to kick you out your place or to take your car or, you know, whatever the case is, you know, we get tempted to, you know, hang out with, you know, old family that, you know, be smoking and you just got over the smoking demon, you know, we got to, we get tempted with patience. I know that's a heavy one, patience. You know, waiting on the most high to come through and save you out of that low estate. All of that. So verse 12 reads, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. For unto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. So we were called into this truth for a reason. All praise to the most high. How about Shemir Shai? We cannot take it for granted. We got to fight. There are many, many witnesses to what you do in this walk. So if people see us fall out of the truth, they may lose faith in the most high or choose to stay in wickedness. You know, if they never did come into this truth. So we don't want to be a stumbling block. It's not just about us. Contrary to, you know, what some people may think. Like, it's always oh, just me, you know, whatever. It just, you know, I'm not affecting nobody. If I follow the truth, you know, I'm just doing me, whatever. No. We don't want to bring offense to the ministry or give a bad name to this truth or your how about Shemiel Shai. Because we represent the most high. You know, when we wear our fringes, when we walk according to Yahweh Shemiel Shai, we're walking in the fruits of the spirit and keeping the commandments, keeping the high holy days, etc., etc. So if we're weak in the spirit, you can cause someone else who's not in the faith or a weak minded person that is in the faith to not even want to attempt to keep these commandments. And Lord willing, you know, obtain the kingdom. And we don't want that blood in our hands. According to Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 18 on down. And this is the book of Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 6. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. So when you fall back into sin, when any of us, when any of us fall back into sin, it's as if we're putting Yahweh Shai back on the cross all over again. And we know how much that was for him to go through that for us. So it's a slap in the face for real. If we don't try to do our best, our very best to hold on to the truth and stay in the ways of diligence and righteousness. So I'm going to close out with these last two precepts. In Hebrews, um, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26 reads, For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there may be no sacrifice for sins. And it is, so I keep jumping down to verse 31, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So we just got to keep enduring, sisters. Lord willing, y'all stay encouraged, stay uplifted, you know, find you a sister that you can confide in and bear your burdens with. You know, first and foremost, go to the most high, pray fast, read, cleave unto him, cry unto him if you need to. Do everything in your power not to fall out of this thing. Fight the spiritual demon, Satan. Nothing is too hard. We are how about you shy? And we don't want to lack fear in the Lord either because it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Because we know they're just back in... Um, Sirach, precept in Sirach, 26 and 28. The Lord has a sword prepared for those who turn from righteousness to sin. So we don't want to end up like those people. We want to do everything in our power to stay on the straight and narrow path, not to drip off into that water or that fire. We don't want to do that. So Lord willing, this is edifying. I love y'all sisters. Lord willing, I can be more consistent. And doing videos, and Lord, when we can just use our talents as the Most High has commanded us, and the water, the water, the water, you have a me, I shy for this video. I needed it, Lord, willing it helps y'all, and Lord, willing y'all continue to endure. And Lord, willing, um, if y'all are celebrating Passover, y'all have a mighty Passover as well, happy Passover season. And call Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, the water Yahweh Hashem Amashiach Komaki Yahweh Shai, and Shalom.